In this lecture, we'll talk about the library of functions and piecewise defined functions. So let's start by talking about the library of functions. The library of functions is eight basic functions whose graphs you should know pretty much off the top of your head. So if we go through them, the first is called the constant function. It takes the form f of x equals b, where b is any real number, and its graph is the graph of a horizontal line which crosses the x-axis at the point 0 comma b. The next function is the identity function which takes the form f of x equals x and its graph is the diagonal line that passes through the origin at a 45 degree angle. For every point on the graph the x-coordinate is the same as the y-coordinate. The next function is the square function which takes the form f of x equals x squared and the graph of the square function is a parabola that opens upward with a vertex at the origin. Next we have the cube function f of x equals x cubed and the cube function looks like this it's kind of s-shaped going from the third quadrant into the first quadrant. Next we have the square root function f of x equals the square root of x and the graph of the square root function looks like this. We have the cube root function f of x equals the cubed root of x whose graph looks like this. It's kind of an S-shape going from the third quadrant to the first quadrant, but it goes more horizontal than vertical. We have the reciprocal function f of x equals 1 over x, whose graph looks like this. It has a horizontal asymptote of the x-axis and a vertical asymptote of the y-axis, so the graph gets close to those axes but never actually touches them. And finally we have the absolute value function, f of x equals the absolute value of x. And the absolute value function looks kind of like a v-shape where each point on the graph has uh, x and then the positive value of x or the absolute value of x as its y component. So let's look at a couple of examples dealing with this library of functions. For our first example, identify the function from the given graph. So here's the graph of the function which function from our library does this look like? And of course it is the cube function. So for another example let's use the library of functions to sketch the graph of f of x equals the absolute value of x and be sure to label three points. So from our library the graph of the absolute value function takes a v-shape and we can pick three arbitrary points. Let's do 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 2, 2. These are all points that are on the graph. Of course, your points may vary if you did this yourself. Now let's talk about piecewise defined functions. A piecewise defined function is described by using different formulas on different parts of the domain. An example of a piecewise function that we're already familiar with is the absolute value function. The absolute value of x is defined to be positive x if x is greater than or equal to 0, or the opposite of x, negative x, if x is less than 0. So let's talk about evaluating piecewise functions. For example, we're given the piecewise function f of x equals negative 3x if x is less than negative 1, 0 if x is equal to negative 1, and 2x squared plus 1 if x is greater than negative 1. With this piecewise defined function in mind, let's evaluate the following. f of negative 2, f of negative 1, and f of 0. Now the important thing to deal with when we're working with piecewise defined functions is we need to make sure that when we're evaluating the function, we're using the formula that corresponds with where our point exists. So if we want to evaluate f of negative 2, we need to look at the rules on the right side of the function and figure out which of those domains does negative 2 live in. Since negative 2 is less than negative 1, that's the first domain, so we'll use the first formula to evaluate the function. So using the function minus 3x, we plug negative 2 in for x, giving us negative 3 times negative 2, which simplifies to be a positive 6. To evaluate f of negative 1, we'll first need to determine where negative 1 lies. So if we look at the domains on the right, x equals negative 1 is the middle one, so we'll use the middle formula to evaluate f of negative 1. 
and since when x is equal to negative 1 the middle term is 0 that means f of negative 1 equals 0. And finally to evaluate f of 0 we need to figure out which part of the domain 0 lies in. So since 0 is greater than negative 1 we're going to use the third formula 2x squared plus 1. So we plug 0 in for x giving us 2 times 0 squared plus 1 which simplifies to be 1. Let's look at another example. So consider the piecewise defined function f of x equals 2x plus 5 if negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 0, negative 3 if x equals 0, and negative 5x if x is greater than 0. We want to answer the following questions. First, find the domain of the function. So for what values of x is this function defined? Since the lowest value of x for which this function is defined is negative 3, our domain will start at negative 3, included, so we use a square bracket. And since there is no upper limit on where this function is defined, it will go up to infinity, so our domain will be negative 3, comma, infinity. Next, we want to find the intercepts of the function. We'll start with the x-intercept, so remember to find the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. So we're going to do this for each part of the piecewise defined function. Starting with the first formula in our piecewise function, 0 would equal 2x plus 5. And if we solve that for x, we would get x equals negative 5 halves. Now the important thing with piecewise functions is we need to make sure that the intercept that we find is in the domain for which this formula is defined. So since 2x plus 5 is for x's between negative 3 and 0, negative 5 halves has to fall between negative 3 and 0. And since it does, we'll have an x-intercept at negative 5 halves 0. Let's look at the second part of our piecewise function. So if y is equal to 0, that means 0 equals negative 3. But 0 doesn't ever equal negative 3, so there's no solution and no x-intercept on this part of the domain. And finally, if we use the third formula from our piecewise defined function, we would get 0 equals negative 5x. If we solve that, we get x equals 0. But again, we need to check and make sure that that falls in the domain for which this definition applies. So the function is negative 5x when x is bigger than 0. And we found that x is equal to 0. So 0 is actually not in this domain, which means we don't have an x-intercept there. Next we want to find out our y-intercept. So remember for y-intercept we set x equal to 0. So when x equals 0, we look at the domains in our piecewise defined function. x equals 0 is the second formula. So f of 0 equals negative 3, which means that our y-intercept is the point 0, negative 3. Next we want to graph the piecewise defined function. So we'll graph them one at a time. We start with the first definition, f of x equals 2x plus 5, if negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 0. So the line 2x plus 5 looks like this, has a y-intercept of 5, and has a slope of 2. But since 2x plus 5 is only defined for x between negative 3 and 0, we want to cut the graph so that it only goes between x equals negative 3 and x equals 0. We put a solid circle at x equals negative 3 because that was included in our domain. And we put an open circle when x is equal to 0 because that was not included. Next, we want to graph the middle part of the piecewise defined function. So when x is equal to 0, f of x is negative 3. That will be the point 0, negative 3. And finally, we graph the last part of the piecewise function, negative 5x, when x is greater than 0. So the line negative 5x has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of negative 5. And since it's only defined when x is greater than 0, we only graph that part of it, the part that would be to the right of the y-axis. Again, we use an open circle when x is equal to 0 because 0 was not included in our subdomain. And finally, we want to find the range of this function. And we're going to do that by looking at our graph. Remember, the range has to do with the y-values so if we look at the smallest possible y value on our graph, we see that the purple line from negative 5x has an arrow on it, which means it keeps going. So this is going to go down to infinity, so our range will go from negative infinity. And the highest y value that we see on this graph occurs at y equals 5, part of the green line. 
But since we have an open circle there, 5 is not included, so we use an open parenthesis. So our range will be the interval from negative infinity to 5 with the endpoints not included. Let's look at another example. This time our piecewise defined function is f of x equals x plus 3 if x is less than negative 2 and negative 2x minus 3 if x is greater than or equal to negative 2. First we want to find the domain of the function. So again the domain are the possible x values that we have. So if we look at the domains defined in the function we have x is less than negative 2 and x is greater than or equal to negative 2. There is no smallest value that bounds it from below so the lowest value we can have is negative infinity. And similarly since there is no biggest value in our set of inequalities there this will go all the way up to infinity so our domain will be all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. Next we want to find the intercepts of the function. We'll start by trying to find the x-intercepts. So again to find x-intercepts we set y equal to 0 and we'll need to use this for both definitions in our piecewise defined function. So on the subinterval for x less than negative 2 we would have 0 equals x plus 3 which if we solve will give us x equals negative 3 and again we need to make sure that this point is in our subinterval so since negative 3 is less than negative 2 we'll have an x-intercept at the point negative 3 0. If we look at the other part of our piecewise defined function when x is greater than or equal to negative 2 we would have 0 equals negative 2x minus 3 which if we solve gives us x equals negative 3 halves and again we need to check and make sure that this result is in our interval so since negative 3 halves is greater than or equal to negative 2 we'll have an x-intercept at negative 3 halves comma 0. Now that we've found our x-intercepts let's try to find our y-intercepts. So for the y-intercepts we set x equal to 0. To evaluate f of 0 we'll need to determine which domain that lives in so is 0 less than negative 2 or is 0 greater than or equal to negative 2? Since 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2 we'll use the second formula negative 2x minus 3. We plug 0 in for x giving us negative 2 times 0 minus 3 and so if we simplify that will give us a y-intercept at 0 negative 3. Let's graph the function. So again we're going to graph the function one at a time. We'll start with the first formula x plus 3. The graph of the line y equals x plus 3 will be a line with y-intercept 3 and a slope of 1 so it'll look like this but since it's only defined to be x plus 3 when x is less than negative 2 we're going to cut off the part of the line that occurs when x is greater than negative 2. So we use an open circle to signify that negative 2 is not included on this line. Next we'll graph the line negative 2x minus 3 which has a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of negative 2 so it's the blue line here but in our piecewise function it's only defined when x is greater than or equal to negative 2 so we're going to erase or take away everything that's less than negative 2 and we'll use a closed dot here to show that the negative 2 is included with the blue line. Finally we want to use our graph to find the range of this piecewise function. Again, since the range deals with the possible y values, we start with the lowest y value we see on our graph. Since both lines point downward with arrows, they're going to go on infinitely down, so the low point will be negative infinity. And the highest y value that we see on our graph is at y equals 1, so our high coordinate, the, the high part of our interval will be 1, and since we have a closed dot, 1 is included, so we use a square bracket to close our interval. So the range goes from negative infinity to 1, with 1 included. Let's do one last example. For this one, we want to find the piecewise defined function from the graph. So notice that the graph is broken up into two sections. There's a red line, and there's a blue line. So we want to find the piecewise defined function for this graph, and we're going to start by identifying the two subdomains. If we look at the red line, or the red part of the graph, the red graph is defined for x values between negative 1 and 0. So the first part of our piecewise defined function will be defined if negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 0. Note we use the less than equal to signs because both dots are solid. And the blue portion of our graph is defined for x values between 0 and 2.
there's an open circle when x is at 0 and a closed circle when x is 2. So we'll say if 0 is less than x is less than or equal to 2. Now we want to find the equations of the lines for each subdomain. So starting with negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 0. We're given two points, negative 1, 0 and 0, 2. So we can use those two points to find the slope. Since slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, if I plug in the, the values from my two points, I'll get 2 minus 0 divided by 0 minus a negative 1. And if we simplify that, that gives us 2. So we have a slope of 2. Now that we know the slope of our line, and we know two points on the line, we can use the point-slope formula to find the equation of the line. So remember, point-slope formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we can use either point that was given to us. I'm going to use the point negative 1, 0. So if I plug that into the point-slope formula, I get y minus 0 equals 2 times x minus a negative 1. And if we simplify, we get y equals 2x plus 2. And so the first part of our piecewise function will be f of x equals 2x plus 2 if negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 0. Now we need to find the equation for the blue line when 0 is less than x is less than or equal to 2. So for the interval between 0 and 2, we see that the line has two points identified, 2, 2, and 1, 1. So we can find the slope, which would give us m equals 2 minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. And if we simplify that, we'll see our slope is equal to 1. Now we can use the slope of 1 to find the equation of the line. We'll start with the point-slope formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We can use either point, so I'm going to use the point 1, 1 with a slope of 1, so that will give me y minus 1 equals 1 times x minus 1. If we simplify, that'll be y minus 1 equals x minus 1. And if we add 1 to both sides of the equation, we get y equals x. So the second formula for our piecewise function will be f of x equals x when 0 is less than x is less than or equal to 2.